monthly subscription charges should not be the block point for all developers to develop or any kind of service for the Web3. If you just you know, look at the existing hardware wallet as well as the app wallet provider, they are supporting the multi-chain because that is will be the starting point for the mass adoption. What do you think in general about SaaS? I think that is the way to move. How important do you think SaaS are in the Web3 ecosystem? They are the Web3 ecosystem, uh, mostly, really. Welcome back, Boltoners. Yes, you're right. Today, we're inside the Mobile World Congress here in Barcelona. In today's video, we want to be interviewing some Web3 projects to find out their common inconvenience when building their own dApps. And we want to be sharing those real cases that we find here in the hall four years from now with our community. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. What do you think about the supply and demand in Web3 projects? I think you know you already heard many use cases driven by the major big corporations such as a Starbucks. And they are trying to implement this Web3 services. But at the same time, you know, if you just want to address for the much bigger, that means the onboarding process for the individual user like me has to be lowered down regardless. And that is the pain point that we already noticed. Definitely, it is difficult. There's um, so much demand for entry these days and web3 especially stuff like zkp and blockchain a very difficult concept to grasp i think that it's difficult to find good quality blockchain developers we are lucky that in our team we have one that is really really good but i know from their department that they have some trouble with interviews and actually finding a way so that they can prove that the developer actually can do what it claims on the cv are you familiar more or less with how much it costs for a company to keep an internal Web3 developers team in-house? I am aware of the numbers, I guess, and it's, uh -huh. it's obviously very high. Engineers have a very high salary, I'm sure. And then I'm not saying that they shouldn't, you know, obviously they do a lot of stuff. There is, you know, quite the, it costs a lot. It's just quite expensive to have an, uh, an engineer. Five, four thousand euros a month. Do you feel that future in Web3 is going to be multi-blockchain? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it just keeps evolving and uh, the whole Web3 community is about mixing people from one side to the other, connecting, networking, and yeah, it's going to lead to that without a doubt. Definitely, because if you just you know, look at the entire ecosystem, if I am using the A service, Web3 service based on the Ethereum, what if, if I decide to use another Web3 service based on the Polygon or Avalanche? That means I and I need to have a wallet based on the each individual network, which is not the user friendly. So now, if you just you know look at the existing hardware wallet as well as the app wallet provider, they are supporting the multi chain because that is will be the starting point for the mass adoption. Honestly, I think it depends. Definitely like an interest in that, and I'm excited to see how that's going to you know transform. And what do you think about uh, SaaS, those software as a service uh, platforms that kind of helps new companies to jump in? using the infrastructure that one provides. Yeah, no, I think it's it's really cool. Um, obviously, it gives that kind of, you know, it lowers the boundaries to entry, which I think is really important, especially in this like technological space, you want that, right? Really excited to see how that's going to develop. They do have a choice because either they can just, you know, make their own wallet service by internal resources, but when it comes with the maintenance as well as the managing the private key, it is really troublesome. So maybe, you know, they are thinking of implementing the third party wallet service inside of their app, monthly subscription charges should not be the block point for all developers to develop or any kind of service for the Web3. I think it's a cheap way for them to benefit from this technology. It's hard to have a one SaaS that fits all though. But if you find the right niche, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. How long did it take your team to deploy the current version of your dApp? About two years. Two years yeah. it took. Wow. About two years, almost three years. What is his thoughts on this Mobile World Congress 2024? It's our our first day here. Some community members also come to the stand and ask to, to know us. So yeah, it's a very grateful day. Let's quickly pause the video right here to interview Marti, one of the team bottom members, to ask his thoughts about this Mobile World Congress 2024. Four years from now, especially, and also the mobile has been a little bit decaf, let's say, because after COVID, there's uh, there weren't that many companies. It's, it's the third day. There's so much people. In We're doing a lot of network. Community members also. People joining the community. Uh, there's many people that are starting to appreciate what, what we are doing. There's people that are, st are starting to understand how they can apply the Web3 technology for their real use cases, right? A little bit of the crypto side or, or the crypto perspective. We are with our 
CEO Luis Carvajo, CEO of Botun. How is everything going related with the community and the token in the Mobile World Congress 2024? Here is just an amazing place, right? To see innovation, other companies, and the good part about having a community is that we have a lot of people that are stopping by that are already following us on Telegram, in Discord, and basically are saying hello. Hey, we are really happy what you are doing. They are always have questions about the token, like, okay, when, how, etc. How do you see this network event in Barcelona? It's great. It's like a window to the world. There are come people from everywhere. For us, it gives us a lot of visibility. So that, that point of view is, is really great. And we are now with our co-founder, Marta. Do you think that in 2024, we're going to see more female jumping into the Web3 ecosystem? Yeah, there's a lot of communities of women in Web3 uh, in Spain and around the world. And they are increasing. We are doing a lot of uh, events and activities to grow these communities. How are you seeing the Mobile World Congress? That's been amazing, this mobile, because there's a lot of events for women trying to empower women in technology, but at the same time, they had the opportunity to be part of two events of women in Web3. And that's all for today's video. Please don't just watch other videos on YouTube about our content. Become part of the community by joining our Telegram group. I will drop it down here. Don't forget to comment any other type of interviews you would want us to do. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.